Today's lecture is on the Middle East. Before we begin, it's important to note that the term Middle East is a relatively new term that, according to some, was created after the First World War and was a construct of the Western Europeans who came to conquer. This map shows us the dates of independence of the so-called Middle Eastern countries, places where guerrilla warfare has been present, and which countries are major oil producers. Our objectives are to identify the five political developments in the Middle East since World War I and the Treaty of Versailles, discuss the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and analyze the U.S. role in the Middle East. The second half of the semester, we have identified two chief political developments worldwide, the Cold War and decolonization. In Europe and the U.S., the Cold War was the dominant political development. In Asia, both the Cold War and decolonization played equal roles. In Latin America, it was both. And finally, in Africa, decolonization took center stage. In the Middle East, in addition to the Cold War and decolonization, we add three more political developments that are unique to the region. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict plays a unique role as most Middle Eastern countries are part of it, either ideologically or physically, or both. We will spend lecture two of three deeping, digging deeper into this. The presence of oil is both a blessing and a curse of the Middle East. On the one hand, it provides revenues for those countries that have it. And on the other hand, it means that the rest of the world wants to make sure they have access to it and often means they involve themselves in your interna internal affairs. Also often is the case that oil revenue is not shared with the population with the people. For example, Saudi Arabia has tons of money from oil revenues, but its subjects, not citizens, are still extremely impoverished. The Saudis don't tax their people because they have so much money, but that means that the people have no say in the government and how the money is spent. A new term, the Arab Cold War, is like the Cold War between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, but the two ideologies are not capitalism and communism, but conservative ideas versus pro-Western ideas. On one side, there are Arabs who wish to restore the caliphate and implement Sharia law in all predominantly Muslim countries, and on the other side, those who say we need to modernize and westernize in order to move forward. Kermal Mustafa Karmal Pasha, or Ataturk of Turkey, embodied this Arab Cold War when out of the ashes of World War I, the Ottoman Empire was broken into <clears throat> many modern nation states of the Middle East. Turkey uh, is founded in 1921 as a modern nation state, and Ataturk, as its president, creates a secularized pro-Western government. Many conservatives resent this, and there is much backlash throughout the Middle East. Let's start with decolonization. At the end of World War II, Britain and France lacked the money and the political will to continue colonizing the Middle East. They both retreated peacefully. They wanted to have good relations with the oil-rich countries in particular. The Arab League was created in 1945, much like other regional organizations that developed after World War II, they hoped to foster cooperation among Arab countries. It is important to mention here that in the Middle East, not everyone is Arab ethnically, but they are the largest ethnicity. And the term, the Arab world, is important. In the US, we typically identify ourselves by our country first, we're Americans and our ethnicity second, Asian Americans, African Americans, Latinx Americans, etc. The opposite is true for Arabs. They identify first as being Arab and second as the country they belong to, Syrians, Lebanese, Jordanian, Palestinian, etc. Being Arab supersedes everything else. This is an important distinction, particularly when we discuss the Israeli-Palestinian conflict next class. You will now watch scenes two through four from the movie Road to 9-11. The first scene is called 80 Years of Humiliation and discusses decolonization. The second scene discusses Ataturk in Turkey, and the third introduces the Muslim Brotherhood. 